there's no way to detect an RFID chip if you don't know the protocol that it's operating at. You can't get it to talk to you. So here's a guy with a laboratory, with all the equipment, with every reader device under the sun, who actually owns Mu chips. He actually says, oh, I've got a ton of Mu chips of, of my own. But they could program the Mu chip in such a way that it wouldn't talk to me. It wouldn't, it wouldn't respond to my reader. So uh, literally, here's, here's you know, through a translator, this, this Japanese engineer and I are trying to cook up our own way for him to be able to determine whether the, excuse me, brand new yen notes, that they the high denomination yen notes that they just released, brand new, never before seen, just like we've kind of been switching over our currency, they switched over their high denomination currency just recently, like within the last couple of months. How would you be able to find out if it's in there or not? And what we finally settled on is he would have to get an electron scanning microscope and literally take it apart in order to find it. You'd have to visually see it. You could not, um, you could not use it, do it using laboratory equipment. So now that being said, let me get back to the exploding $20 bill issue. So the question was, would it be possible to put one of these in $20 bills? Well, would it be possible? Absolutely. Would it be wise? Would it be a good investment for the government? Probably not. Not in 20s, maybe in hundreds down the road when it gets cheaper. But I, I would say probably not a good investment. So most of us in the RFID, sort of the community that follows RFID, were saying it doesn't, it doesn't seem likely to us. Um, but there was still this issue of, it, of the eye turning black. And finally, what somebody did was they took a stack of paper, just plain white photocopy paper, cut it into the shape of $20 bills, put a stack of that into the microwave, and it turned black at about the same point. And what we realized was it was just the convergence of the heat, because eventually if you put paper in the microwave, it will burn. And it was simply that was where the heat was concentrating. Um, what I found much more interesting about that discussion, though, was not whether or not there's a tag in the $20 bill, but to me, the interesting part was that we'd have to ask the question. The fact that we in our country would have so little confidence that our government would tell us whether it was putting tracking devices in cash to remove its anonymity, I think speaks to a much greater issue than whether or not your particular $20 bill is being, is being tracked when it comes out of the ATM machine. And that's really been um, sort of the, the crux of my crusade for the last uh, two years, is to say, why is it that this technology is out here and so few of us know it exists? And even those of us who know it exists really don't know where it is and have no way of finding out where it is. And even the citizens of the EU, when they go and ask their own government, their own representative elective government whose salaries they pay, are you tagging our currency? The answer they get is, well, we, we won't discuss that with you. So I, I have sort of a, a sinking feeling that unless we begin to demand more openness and more disclosure from our government on where this technology is, that we will have lots of radio debates like the one I was involved in and lots of things flurrying around the Internet and lots of rumors flying until we can actually feel like we have some accountability as to where this technology is appearing. All right. Um, the plan for RFID ultimately is to use it to replace the barcode. Now, the, the barcode has been around since the 1970s. Um, I don't know if people remember, but there was quite a bit of controversy over the introduction of the barcode in the 1970s. And I've been doing a little bit of research sort of looking back at that controversy. It's actually quite fascinating from a sociological standpoint because many of the things that people feared would happen that um, they got over those fears and they didn't happen. They're all happening now. Uh, one of the fears that people had in the 1970s over the barcode was that, well, if you have this barcode thing that human beings can't read, you know, we, we look at a barcode, we don't know what it says, we don't know how much the price tag is, then, then you're going to be tempted to not put a price tag on the item. And if you're tempted to not put a price tag on the item, your next temptation is going to be to not put a price tag on the shelf. And then basically we're going to be at your mercy buying items off the shelf and you can just ring it up at whatever price and, and we won't know how much we're paying for things. Well, sure enough, that's exactly what's, what's happening. Um, I, I, I was just at, um, I spent a lot of my time lately in airports. And I was just at an airport, you know, a little, little news shop in the airport. And literally half the items in that store had no price tag anywhere on them and had no price tag on the shelf. And of course they don't need that. They, they don't need to know what the price is. You, you need to know that as the consumer. So a lot of those fears, um, which initially people said were unfounded, have actually begun happening. 
So one of the, the, the things that I ask myself is, you know, we were given many assurances, the barcode, we'll, we'll always have a price tag on there, don't you worry, you know, we'll, we'll put up laws to say that you have to put these price tags on the shelf. And yet we're seeing that, you know, you let a generation go by, you let 20, 30 years go by, people kind of forget the original controversy and, and we sort of accept the status quo. Uh, it's very interesting the promises being made with regards to RFID right now as a replacement for the barcode. But before I get into that, let, let me tell you why it's important that RFID would replace the barcode. It was introduced in the 1970s, and there was very kind of slow adoption. People were kind of slow in the uptake picking up the, the barcode until one company came along in the 1980s, in fact, 1984, rather prophetically, Walmart which at that time was uh, the 400-pound gorilla as opposed to the 800-pound gorilla it now is, but it was still a big company, Walmart issued a mandate to its suppliers and said, if you want to sell products to us here at Walmart, from henceforward, from this moment on, you will put a barcode on it, or we'll simply stop carrying your products and we'll buy your competitors' products. And I'm sure they'll be happy to put a barcode on there. And almost single-handedly and almost overnight, Walmart drove the adoption of the barcode to the point where now you know, it's hard to find anything that doesn't have a barcode on it. Uh, in fact, even patient wristbands now have barcodes on them, and blood samples in hospitals now have barcodes, and you know, little, little um, ankle bracelets on babies now have barcodes. So we're, we've really kind of gone way to the extreme of using barcodes on lots of things. Well, since I last addressed this audience in this room, Walmart issued a new mandate. And its new mandate is you will verily use RFID. And if you don't, we won't carry your products. So they did that uh, last summer. They told their 100 top suppliers, these are the companies that buy products in every single one of our homes. Of that, I'm, I'm, I'm virtually certain, unless you live in a tent. Uh, they told those top suppliers that they will begin using RFID on crates and pallets. This is the shipping containers that are lifted up on forklifts. That, that wooden thing with the forklift lifts is called a pallet. Um, the crates are, um, sometimes they, they take saran wrap and they wrap it around all the products. They have to slap an RFID tag onto those crates and pallets as they're being delivered into <coughs> Walmart warehouses. Now, this is a little different from using it to replace the barcode on individual items. Uh, we believe that's coming, and Walmart believes that's coming as well. We'll get to that in a second. But issuing the mandate on crates and pallets had a massive impact on this industry from the last time I, I was here. Last, the last time I was here, I was concerned because there was a lot of talk about using RFID in a lot of very disturbing ways. This year, there's a lot of action on RFID. And by action, if you go on Google and you type in RFID now, you'll get over 4 million search hits. Uh, if you go through uh, the, the Get Rich Quick Investment schemes, you will see that people are saying RFID is the greatest thing since sliced bread. Invest in this technology and you'll be rich because everybody is signing up for it. Uh, you will see that entire factories and production facilities have been uh, springing up around the world to produce massive numbers of these chips and antenna combinations. You will see that uh, many retailers trying to keep up with Walmart, which is now the biggest retailer not only in the U.S., but on the globe, that retailers such as uh, uh, Albertsons and Best Buy and Target and uh, retailers overseas and in Europe such as uh, Tesco and Metro, which we'll also be talking about, that they are all getting on board with RFID. And many of them have issued their own mandates to their suppliers saying, well, if you want to sell to us, then, then we, we also are going to insist on having RFID. So what you have is a whole bunch of sort of middle manager logistics guys whose job it is to, to move things around backroom warehouses. You have those guys now attending lots of seminars. You have those guys buying lots of equipment. You have those guys signing consulting contracts with companies that can come in and teach them how to use this technology. And you have a massive, enormous investment in RFID happening in that kind of like, I mean, when was the last time you read like a, a logistics supply side journal? I mean, it's just not something that average people hear about. But if you know anybody who works in retail on the logistics or the executive side and you ask them about RFID, They'll immediately say, oh, yeah, oh, we're on board with that, oh, sure. We're not behind the times. We're, we're, we're up with that, yeah. And, um, you know, I mean, we're talking everybody from book publishers to um, consumer product goods manufacturers, clothing manufacturers, food manufacturers across the board. 
So while we, the public, the citizens, the, the consumer citizens who don't work in supply-side technology, while we kind of blithely think, well, I haven't seen it in my own home yet, um, maybe it's kind of quietly gone away, multi-millions of dollars of investment are happening behind the scenes. Now, the plan down the road, 